Okay, so this is going to be part two of putting the firmware update on the cube, and then we will disassemble it, put the new CPU card in there, hooking up the 28 volt custom bypass power supply to it, and then assembling it and booting it up. So what we're going to do is I've already got the uh, CD that Sean sent me. It's already in here. And basically what we do is we uh, powered up the cube, stuck the CD-ROM in there. We powered down the cube. And so what we have to do now is hold down on the firmware switch on the bottom, hold down the power button, turn it on. And then as soon as the flashing light starts flashing on that, then we hold down on the C key. Now, I did try this once already, and I did put the firmware patch on it, but I'm just going to show you again how this works. Now, I got the cube laying on its side because obviously it's uh, easier to get to the switch there, and I unplugged everything except what I needed. Now, the first time I had the keyboard plugged in, I was using my USB hub. It would not let me access the keyboard. It was cutting the power off, so I just hooked the keyboard directly up to the cube, and it sees the keyboard now. So I've already got the firmware patch on this, but I will go through it again and show you what it looks like. It's pretty, actually pretty easy and pretty neat. Now, supposedly after you put this patch on, you can't boot up on the processor in this, but this is a 1.4 Sonic card that's natively supported. So HEP at 68K Mac form wanted me to make sure that it's still booted up after putting this firmware patch on it. So we will find out if that works. So anyway, I'm going to readjust the camera. We will do the firmware install again on it. Okay, so we're going to do this again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold, you can't see it, it's off camera, but I'm going to hold down on the programmer switch. I'm going to turn it on. And it's going to be a little noisy because of the fan. And as soon as I see it start flashing, I'm going to hold down on the C key and it will shortly boot into the CD drive on it, the Logitech firmware enabler on it. So there we go. It's validating the images. And we're just going to go through the process again here. So it's asking me what option I want to do. And the first one is do the following menu. Now it's saying remove, 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 or shut down. Because I've already installed the firmware on this. But had I not had it done, instead of removing, it would say install, install, install. So we've already got the firmware flashed on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to the next step and that is we're gonna shut it down and we'll hit the F8 button here. It's gonna power down in 15 seconds. And then what we're gonna try to do is see if this will boot up in Leopard with this update on it. Okay, so it's shut down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot it up, but I'm going to hold down on the option key. And that way we can go to the boot picker on it. I have the CD set up as a target drive on this. So I'm going to hold down on the option key. I'm going to turn it on here. And let's just see if this thing boots. So there we go. We're going to go to the boot picker here. And we will select the uh, leopard disc. As soon as it finds all the, the drives here, there will be Sorbet on there. You'll see the CD enabler and you'll see the uh, leopard. So this is what we want is the leopard. So we'll select that as soon as it's ready. We still get the little watch symbol up there. So let's go over here and see if, if, it, will, if it will boot up in Leopard. Let's find out. Because like I said, Hep from 68K Mac Forum, he wants me to do this just to make sure that it does boot up. 
because he said it should boot up since I have the uh, other card in it here. And I'm going to uh, eject the CD here. Nice, so we're still able to boot up on the Sonic card in here, good. All right, so our next step will be to eject the CD out of it. And so far, Sean, I haven't detected a curse yet. We'll go to the next step tearing this thing apart and putting the new processor card in it. Okay, so we're here for part two on the processor upgrade on the cube. So anyway, we're going to get this 2.1 gigahertz processor card in it. The newer tech with the custom made 28 volt bypass. But first, we have to take this apart to take a few things out, take the old processor out, and put the new one in, and hooking up the wires. Hopefully, uh, this is not cursed, although it has been tested from, heard from 68K Mac form, so I'm not worried about it. So anyway, we'll take this apart. And I will fast forward this. It's not going to be a detailed teardown because I've had this thing apart many, many times. You can go to some of my older videos and I show you how we kind of take it apart. So let's disassemble this. Uh, when we hook up the 28 volt bypass, uh, this is where it's going to go. I'm going to point to this with my screwdriver here. So you can see right there, it's going to go there, that wire. And then it's going to go on the main board down here too. That's where the new wire is going to go. And. Now I'm going to put that power supply in here somewhere because we don't need this uh, lower heat sink here. And um, I'm going to take this apart here a little bit more here. I'll have plenty of room for that 28 volt bypass board. And this wire is what supplies the uh, power to the LED that uh, lights up on the outer case, if in case you're wondering what this wire is for. All right, so I'm gonna pull this out here. Come on, let's probe here. For the autonomous fan controller, this is the heat sensor. So when we put that new CPU card in it, we will have to relocate this a little bit. Okay, so we got the Sonic card out of it here. And this is the 1.4 gigahertz card. And like I said, when we went from the uh, 600 megahertz to this one, quite an amazing speed jump. Uh, you can see there's thermal paste on the back. I'm gonna clean that off. 
And then um, this is the heat sink. Now this part here we have to take off because of the big copper heat sink that's on this one here. Uh, it's gonna be the right distance. So we're going to uh, take this off here and then we will uh, continue. All right, this thing really stuck down there. I have never ever took that plate off. This is a two piece heat sink. Um, and I'll tell you what, I had to use a screwdriver to pry that off. That thermal paste was really stuck down on there. And you can see the uh, other, uh, right here, that's the uh, thermal pad that they had on there too as well. But we're not gonna be needing this anymore. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, clean this up here. You know, we're gonna use some uh, alcohol and we'll do a little cleaning on it and then we will start to put this back together. All right, so we got the heat sink all cleaned up there. Um, we scrubbed it really good. Um, all the thermal paste is off. And so we are ready to start putting it back together. Now, uh, just a couple things is this is the um, 12 volt base fan that I've had in this, and this is controlled by the autonomous fan controller. And the autonomous fan controller is right in there he says little thumb screws there that's where it resides so now i gotta figure out where we're going to put this guy now i have a ssd in here and so what i'm thinking is i can probably just gotta kind of look at look at things here because we um have to uh, figure some things out here. That wouldn't work there. So I think we're gonna put it up here in a hard drive bay here. And that's what HEP Mac 68K form was suggesting. So I'm gonna think here where we're gonna put it here. Let's see. And this has got quite a uh, heat sink on it, this uh, bypass board here. It's very tiny, it's just a heat sink that kind of gets in the way here. So i got to figure out something here. So what I'm thinking actually is I might just bend this ear down a little bit. This used to hold the other part of the heat sink, but we don't need it anymore. And we could always straighten it back up if we had to. Um, this is the uh, sensor for the uh, fan controller. So I think if I pull that down, I'll be able to slide that in there. And even if it's sticking out a little bit, that's fine. Uh, we should be able to close up okay. And the fan, this is the top of the, the cube here. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do here. Let's see here how we can do this and still make it look good here. Now, hopefully I don't break it off, but if I do, I do, but I try not to. I just wanna get this out of the way. So I can slide that in there. Yeah, like that. So let's see how this works now. Let me think about this here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mount the motherboard back. I'm going to put the CPU in, and then I'm going to, uh, that'll kind of tell me how I can orient this here. And one other thing is this is the Ethernet card on the bottom of the logic board. And on some of these cubes, it was a built-to-order gigabit Ethernet. This is 10 over 100, but they do exist, the gigabit Ethernet cards for these. And that's probably one of the greatest things you could find besides doing the processor upgrades on these things is uh, that would really make it much faster on the internet. So if anybody's out there watching out there in YouTube land, if you have one of these, I would definitely be interested in it because that would be fantastic to have the uh, gigabit ethernet card in here. Now I don't know how much different it looks than this. I've never been able to really to find out much information on them here. I mean, here's the, uh, the number on it there. Let me just kind of get it right there. You can see it there. And that's the uh, 10 base 100 ethernet. So yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start putting this thing back together here. Relocated. And this is kind of why I got to put this back on here because I have to figure out how to run these wires for this uh, bypass on this thing. So let's see here. Put it right there. Get this to drop down evenly there. There we go. Now we're seating down. There we go. We are seated down on here. Good. So now, okay, so we're going to thermo paste this down here. Just going to sit it right there. And there's certainly a lot of uh, debate on how to apply thermo paste. Um, for me, I'm just going to make sure that I have good coverage. I'm Typically, I put it on both sides. Um, it's really cold out here in the garage. This is usually a little bit more uh, runnier here. So let me um, eek. get this uh, kind of spread out here a little bit. Well, we got it on there. Boy, that is very, very lumpy thermal paste. And I just used that not too long ago. And uh, I used the uh, MX4 Arctic. Never had a problem with it. Um, that's actually what I used on this one here on the sauna. And you can see it's a little bit more creamier looking. But this will work. I guess it's just because it's really cold out here. So anyway, uh, we're going to take and flip this over and start putting this in. And this ought to be a lot of fun.
Okay, so we uh, got the um, CPU all mounted in there. It's on the heat sink real nice there. It's a little bit of the thermal paste is oozing out, which that's totally fine. That way we know it's making a good connection. And so I'm just routing the wires here. So I have the 28-volt uh, bypass goes there. The other end of the wire goes to the board. And this one goes to the uh, graphics card. And that way we have plenty of wire. So we'll be able to mount this underneath here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this other one down so I can slide that in. And I'm going to mount it so it doesn't move around. So that's what I got to think about doing here. And then we can uh, finish uh, button it up and then we can test it. Okay, so we got the cube all put back together here. And so this is where I put that 28 volt bypass in here and I do have it insulated. I have electrical tape on the bottom of it so there's no chance of it shorting out. And when we put case on that, that's gonna hide most of that. This is the uh, heat sensor for the autonomous fan controller and you see it's right there underneath that copper heat sink and that's where we need it. And uh, yeah, I think we're uh, looking pretty good here. And I, like I said, that's about the only really place I could put this. And we will power it up and see what happens. We will cross our fingers that there are no curses in here. Be back in just a moment. So we got everything hooked back up here and I'm very nervous. I hope this powers up fine. Uh, we'll cross our fingers and we're gonna give it a try. So we're gonna hit the power button. Okay, it's running. We're getting video now. The fan controller's running. I'm really nervous. Come on, boot. All right, we are booting up. Yes. So the newer tech card is working and we'll be able to check it out in just a minute here. As soon as it boots up, we are booting up in Leopard. I will try Sorbet later. And it was uh, a little creative uh, work getting that all to fit in there properly. So yeah, let's see how soon we get into Leopard here. And look at that, we're getting into Leopard. Yeah, we know the, uh, yeah, we know the clock's not set. So let me uh, get over here. All right, so let's uh, go at about this Mac here. And look at that. 2.1 gigahertz. Excellent. So it recognizes the new CPU. Excellent. Wow, I am so happy that this is working. Sorry, I'm a little excited here with the camera here. Let me just kind of get everything all lined back up here. And the autonomous fan controller is working like it should. Our light is lit up on the Apple logo, good. So we got everything back together, sweet. All right, so what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna do a, a Geekbench test here. All right, so we're opening Geekbench here, and you can see it recognizing the processor. This is the uh, 7447A, that's 2.10 gigahertz. So we're gonna run the uh, Geekbench here, and let's see how it works. So let's uh, run the benchmarks here, and we'll see how long this takes here. We ran our Geekbench test, and you can see that the uh, new processor, the 2.1 gigahertz processor, scored 741. 
and then you can see the performances here on it. Now this is the Sonnet 1.4 gigahertz processor and you can see the total score on that one so you can see the processor performance is much better and the uh, floating point unit is much better and the memory bandwidth performances or memory performance is better and then the bandwidth performance is the same on both processors now this we're running in leopard now what I'm going to do I'm just very curious I'm going to run Geekbench on Sorbet and I'm just curious if there's any difference Sorbet is a lot more leaner of a system so I wonder if the performance will be a little better so yeah so let's um, take and we'll look at this one too and let's see now on this one here on the um, excuse me I'm sorry the L2 cache on the new processor the 2.1 gigahertz processor 512 cache on the Sonnet one we only had the uh, 256 L2 cache on that processor so I have not compared this to Sean's yet from Action Retro I'm just curious what the difference will be now again this is the 7447A and then the one on the Sonnet was an older one it was the 7445 uh, this one did, does not have free scaling where this one does and basically that allows you to run a little higher clock speed, a little bit more efficient. So let's uh, go to Sorbet. I'm going to uh, shut this down and I'm going to open up Sorbet and we'll run Geekbench and that. Let's just see if there's any difference. Okay, so we switched over to uh, Sorbet Leopard and we did a Geekbench test. Actually, I ran it like three times and every time I would run it, it would go up a few more points and probably if I'd run it again, it'd probably be in the 20s, which I find kind of interesting. But anyway, you can see it's 717. And then when I was in Leopard, it was 741. And same way with Leopard, every time I run it, it'd go a little quicker. And we get just a little bit higher every time we do it. So yeah, but I'm very, uh, very pleased with the performance on this. Um, we will go back to Leopard. And I'm going to uh, show you what Sean got on his cube, on his upgrade. So that way we can compare it. Okay, so we are back in Leopard. And so this on my processor, so mine is the uh, 7447A, all right? And mine's 2.1 gigahertz. So... Mine has a uh, L2 uh, cache, it has a half a meg on that. So if you look, my best score was 741. Now this is a screenshot of Sean's. And then the processor he runs is the 7448, which is the step above the one that I have. And his is a two gigahertz model single core as this one is same company same processor just mine's the older model of the processor so you can see mine's 741 his is 1046 we're both running leopard the latest build and the latest firmware on it uh, you can see on this one here processor performance 1038 his is 1438, so 400 more than what I have. The floating point unit, mine's 852. His is 1194, again, higher. The memory performance, 330. His is 534. And that also comes from having that larger L2 cache also on his chip. Memory bandwidth is 135. 
This is uh, 184. So the 80, the 7448A is a little f faster in terms of the performance. It has a lot more transistors on it versus this one. But both of these processors, as far as in the cube, are an awesome upgrade. His is a little better than mine, but I'm very happy. I mean, this thing is quick. I mean, with the Sonnet 1.4 card, it's pretty fast. But with this one here, it's a lot quicker. It's even more snappier, especially in Leopard. Now, Sorbet, uh, like I said, the Geek Bench, a little bit lower on that. Uh, I did it three times. Every time I do it, it go up a little bit higher. I'm just curious, Sean, if you have Sorbet on your cube, I'd be curious to see what that number would. You'd probably find it. It might be just a little bit lower on Sorbet. I'm not sure why, but uh, I would think it'd be a little quicker because it's more of a streamlined program. But anyway, yeah, so this, I'm very, very happy with this. Uh, this came out really good. Uh, thanks to HEP at the 68K Mac Forum. Uh, you hooked me up with that processor and also that uh, bypass board on it too. Now I've been letting this cube run for like six hours now and the thing actually it, it's not even warm. The fan does ramp up uh, when I did the geek bench it ramped up a little bit but I mean this thing is just as cool in the front as it is in the back and Sean um, you know what the curse did not follow that disc. How, however you did it, it was fine. It was curse-free. Uh, the upgrade on the cube, no problem. Worked great. So I consider that a success. So we're going to get into a Nanosaur and be back in just a second. Okay, so we're going to just, just play a little bit of Nanosaur. I don't have my uh, controller, so I have to use the keyboard. And I am a very terrible game player, as you will soon find out. In the year 4122, a soul dinosaur was sent 65 million years. Like I said, I usually have my uh, game controller plugged in here, so my flying is not that great anyway, but it's really uh, hampered with my uh, mouse and keyboard here. find an egg here. Ah, here we go. Here's one right here. Whoa. Find the egg again. There it is over there. I got a P 
pick it up here. Okay, let's see you in here. I'm a dodo bird because I'm a dodo playing this. Oh, good grief. It plays really smooth, pretty smooth on this uh, processor. Well, I tell you what, I am pretty bad. I think I'll end it because I'm not doing the game justice. But anyway, uh, yeah, let's uh, close all these tabs here. Oh, because I'm in 10 for Fox. Yikes. Okay, hold on there. There we go. Finally, let me out of it here. What happened there? Let's go to uh, Force Quit here. Quit that 10 for Fox. We don't need to be getting on the internet here. Anyway, let's get out of the game here. So anyway, this has been a good upgrade. I have a very, very fast G4 cube now. It was pretty fast with the 1.4 Sonic card in it, but now we have the 2.1 gigahertz newer tech board in it, and I'm very pleased with it. Sean, um, your processor is just a step faster than mine as far as the Geekbench scores, but they're both awesome processors. Um, the only thing we could do even more on this is if we found a dual processor card, then that would really be the holy grail. So anyway, uh, please like and subscribe and click that notification bell. We're also on MeWe and Twitter. You can reach me there. And we're also on Rumble and Odyssey platforms as well. So you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.